Assalamu alaikum. My brothers and sisters, increasingly people are becoming unhappy with their marriages and it's causing a problem. Obviously, this does happen sometimes. We need to remember, try and resolve your matters, try and solve your problems because you will have a problem with everyone if you're going to just divorce because of one problem. You're definitely going to be having problems with all sorts of people. If you're not going to uh, be prepared to try and solve the matter, you're not going to get anywhere. So I've been receiving emails, messages, I've been dealing with cases where the men are becoming greedy sometimes, such that they don't want to live with their wives because they're either having an affair or they're, they're either leading some form of a dark life or they simply don't like the wife anymore. They neither uh, share intimate moments with them. They probably sleep separately with them in a lot of cases and they don't want to divorce them and they don't want to do anything about it. They neither want to release them nor do they want to keep them properly. This is prohibited. The Quran says that you should not leave a person mu'allaqah. Mu'allaqah meaning she is hanging. Neither can she say she is married because the guy is not even uh, behaving like a husband and there's no rights being fulfilled. Nor can she say she is divorced because she doesn't have the divorce. So in that case, normally the scholars are to come in and to resolve the matter. If need be, they can nullify that marriage. Unfortunately, a lot of scholars and a lot of uh, ulama bodies and so on, they take a very long time uh, to determine things and to try and make things work and to patch things up and sometimes ridiculously so, sometimes rightly so. But I believe it needs to be expedited in the sense that uh, it shouldn't be taking too long, especially in this day and age, to determine what's happening and if there is wrong happening, that nikah can be nullified and should be nullified very, very quickly. May Allah make it easy for us. The nullification of a nikah is generally considered as one uh, irrevocable talaq, which means if the two would like to come together, they may come together again with a new marriage, with a new nikah. But it's not like it's over forever and ever. However, my brothers and sisters, what I want to say today is some of these greedy men have gone away with the belongings of their wives. They go away with the belongings of their wives. Just today, I was dealing with a case where Someone went away with the jewelry that the parents of this woman gave her at the time of marriage. And this guy, he thinks it's his right. He's been having an affair or he's been, you know, wrong. He married someone not wanting to marry her, probably because his parents told him that we don't want you to marry the person you want to marry. So now he married someone else. And uh, when he didn't touch her or he didn't even fulfill her rights in any way, he didn't treat her like a wife. What happened is uh, the marriage was falling apart. Now they prepared to give a divorce, but they're saying that, you know what? Whatever, whatever gold was given to you is now ours. We're not going to give it back to you. And we want, to, you know, we, we're not going to give you anything. And even the mahar, we're not going to give it back to you. We're not going to give it to you. My brothers, my sisters, that mahar is owed to the woman. It is owed to her. It's her right. If you don't give it to her, Allah will take it from you through sickness, through accidents, through some form of disaster. That money is not yours. Allah will take it from you. So rather give it like a good boy, give it properly, than to be a, a bad person and wait for Allah to take it away from you through your hospital bills. That's just an example. That is just an example. He can take it from you in any way he wishes, but he will take it from you. It's not yours. Uh, and you would still have earned the sin of not having given it to its rightful per, uh, owner. The same applies. Her bangles, her things, her belongings, you're not returning them, you're not giving them. Allah will take it from you in another way. Through sickness, like I said, through disease, through accidents, through stress, through whatever else, it will go from you without a doubt. Allah does not leave people to oppress others. He gives you a chance to resolve the matter. That chance differs from person to person, the length of it. Sometimes it's a few days, sometimes it's weeks, sometimes a few years, but never more than just a few years. It will come back to haunt you in such a way that you will not even know. Why is it that everything's going wrong? That's why we say when things go wrong for you, have you wronged someone? Have you stolen someone's wealth? Have you oppressed a person? Have you actually usurped the wealth of someone, sworn them, hurt their feelings? You pay for that. The Almighty makes sure that you pay for that. So don't think you're going to get away. So what I want to say, 
how why are you so hard up so hard up that you don't even want to give a talaq you don't even want to divorce this woman you you want to make life so difficult allah will create difficulty in your life in a short span of time in a short span of time it will happen you create difficulty for someone the almighty is watching he gives you a period of time to resolve the matter if you're not going to do that he will create difficulty in your life so please remember this uh today was really something very sad the case that i was dealing with today was actually connected to this and you know i wonder why wealthy people play bigger games than those who don't have much sometimes you have people who don't really have much they are ready to give back things they are ready to do things they are ready to to actually um resolve matters they are ready to issue the talaq etc but the wealthier we get the more arrogant we become the more we want to hold on to wealth reminds me of abu lahab he was a wealthy man so miserly that allah makes mention of his miserliness in the quran what are you going to do with that money are you going to take it in your grave no so then use it and give the people's due before it is too late give them more than what they are owed because you have much more because the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says a person who gives more is far better than the one who holds back may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us so there are a lot of men out there who want to fix the women by stealing their property by stealing their rights by usurping the right i'm talking here at the time of divorce and i'm talking here at the time when life you know is broken down the man's having an affair he's enjoying himself he's doing whatever he wants in a haram way or in whatever else way well leave this woman alone let her go and do her thing let her continue in her life let her have her thing and if you release her release her with honor that's the sign of a muslim when you release someone with honor that's what the quran says that if you're giving them a a, a divorce do it with honor and respect today I witness non-Muslims with such honor and dignity they divorce in a way that the children are least affected but get to the Muslims the holier they are the wealthier they are the dirtier the divorce they pretend like qiyama came and that's it but you were intimate with this person you had kids with this person and today you want to ban the kids from seeing their mom or their dad you want to tell them how evil this person is don't involve your kids in the mess don't involve your children in your mess that was a mess between you and the father or the mother of that particular or those children if you were to make the kids counselors at the age of 8 and 5 i promise you it will stunt their growth there they they don't deserve that let them understand look i didn't get along with your mom but you know what we're good people she's still your mom until the end of the world <laughs> meaning ila qiyam as-sa'a you go into the hereafter allah chose that as your mom that person and me as your dad or whatever else you need to know the moment you use children as a weapon you pay the price for it you will watch it you will see what will happen that is foolish behavior and like i say the wealthier people are the holier they are when i say holy i mean they can be making five or six salah a day includes that includes the tahajjud you know and this is why subhanallah it's very very dangerous for us sometimes when we think we're holy but allah tests you with things that are tough for you you've got to throw your ego aside throw it aside and do what's right you're holding somebody's money throw your ego give it you're holding somebody's property throw your ego give it you don't throw your ego you're going to pay a price for it and i'm not mincing my words you will pay and that payment will be very very heavy remember this resolve your matters if you cannot then allah says separate with honor with dignity you know we don't have to be bitter don't talk bad about people after the divorce it's over you didn't get along with them someone else will get along with them so you, you your story is closed now move on but the more we continue talking about our past and what happened the, the less we would be able to succeed in our future remember this So I really call on all those who are struggling in their marriages firstly to solve their problems to resolve the matters because as I started the session you need to resolve your problems if you want to divorce just because of small things minor matters I saw a little clip that was doing its rounds on WhatsApp where on the day of the uh wedding the poor bride went to play a game with the groom to try and you know tease him by putting the cake to his mouth and then taking it away before he could bite it and he slapped her such a hot slap i think that's the hottest thing he's probably ever done because he definitely it was something silly and i'm quite sure that that marriage something very bad must have happened to it if it didn't break 
So if that's the behavior of the people, then why get married in the first place? Control your anger, your temper, say good words. Can't you be a lovely person? I want to talk about, uh, in, in, in the next few sessions perhaps, I'll talk about whether or not you are really worth being a wife or a husband. Are you really worth being a husband? People want to get married. Do you really know what it takes to be a husband? What you're going to need if you want to be a husband? I think we're going to have to talk about that. And even a wife, we're going to have to talk about this because people think, I want to get married. I love you. I want to get married. And they get married and they're slapping each other, swearing each other, and they don't even know what marriage is all about. They have no idea. And then uh, they think, oh, it didn't work. But you didn't even know what marriage is about. This is why I am one who encourages very strongly that you do courses before you get married on marriage and marital life. What is it that is required of me and what am I owed? So you know not to be trampled upon and you also know not to trample upon. Respect each other. Come on, come on. Respect each other. Make each other smile and laugh at times. You know, have moments that are really cherished such that if the day you go, you will be remembered remembered and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Uh, this video was connected to the problem that people face upon divorce of not being given their property, not being given their gold, not being given their mahar, the cheating that's happening. And the difficulty is scholars, unfortunately, sometimes side with the men because they think, well, we just need the talaq. I promise you it is their duty to help nullify that nikah if needed. And it's our duty too. And we do that. We actually do it. The thing is, each person has territory. And I wouldn't like to enter territory that's, that I'm not mandated to operate within. So if it's my own territory, it's a different thing. If it is someone else's territory, well, you've got to discuss it with the scholars there. And we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, when, uh, when we are holding the property of other people, we should be ashamed of ourselves, totally ashamed. They, it's not like they need it or don't need it. It's their right. It's their property. How can you steal the mahr of your wife? You haven't given it. How? What, what do you think Allah is going to do? When Allah says in Surah Al-Mujadila, Allah says, قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ Allah has heard the one who is discussing with you or who is complaining to you about her husband, complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, you know the term mujadala is used which refers to uh, a type of a debate or a type of a discussion that has in it a slight bit of uh, you know argument uh, argumentativeness if that's a word <laughs> but Allah make it easy because we need to be human beings come on you should learn to love people and to care for them and to care for even those you dislike because you have family members, you have perhaps, perhaps sons, daughters, brothers, sisters. How would you like it if they were treated that way? Some people would say, well, I don't mind. Astaghfirullah, you don't have a heart. You don't have a heart. Treat others the way you would like to be treated because a day will come if you have treated people badly that Allah will create someone to pay you back by treating you 10 times worse. Remember that. And when you pay for it, it's not going to be funny. It's really going to be very, very difficult. So if you create a difficulty for someone, Allah will create difficulty for you. And the hadith says, if you create ease for someone, the Almighty will not only create ease for you in this world, but on the day of judgment, He will create ease for you. One of the wealthiest, or one of the qualities of the wealthiest of people is that he or she can forgive. Forgive. Don't hold it in your heart. It is a quality that is amazing to be able to forgive. Release. It's okay. What did you benefit from it? You know, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna take this person's wealth. What am I going to get from it? Give it to them. It's okay. Take it. And you know what? If they want this, take that too. Subhanallah. Uh, may Allah make it easy. I'm not saying allow people to trample over your rights, but I'm talking to the other side. Those who are holding back other people's things. Learn to release all of that. Give that away meaning give it to the rightful people. And let's not hold that grudge so badly. I was telling the, the same person today, I was saying, you know what? Yes, the guy owes you the wealth, the guy owes you the mahar, the guy owes you the gold, the guy owes you whatever other belongings are there. The guy doesn't want to give it to you. I tell you what, you keep on going with your own life. Lead your life. And don't expect it to come because Allah will bring it to you. 
Allah is going to give you your wealth. Say for example, a thousand dollars are owed to you. Allah will give you that thousand in another way because it's written for you. It's meant for you. You might get a good deal. You might get a good job. You might get something else that's worth that thousand. And Allah says your thousand is back to you. And you know what? That person has a thousand that is not theirs. Allah will take it away from them in one way or another. So wealth will definitely get to who it belongs to. Allah does not make mistakes. If you're owed a thousand, you will get a thousand. You might get more if Allah's written more. And if it's not written, it's not coming. And if this person has something that's not theirs, Allah will take it. If, they, if you don't give it, like I said, he's going to take it in hospital bills, in accidents, in some form of damage, in floods and disasters, in everything else, because that wealth is not yours. So learn to give it back. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all. I hope I've encouraged the men out there to sort their matters out, learn to issue. If you have to, don't put a person in a corner. Four years have passed, five years have passed, eight years have passed. You haven't been living with each other, no sleeping with each other, no looking at each other, and you're still holding back that talaq. Do you really think Allah is happy with that situation? Do you really think that Allah is happy with what you're doing? And people say, yeah, it's okay. We'll sort it out on the day of judgment. You will be shocked to learn on the day of judgment that the doom may come to you rather than the person you thought. We will sort it out with you on the day of judgment. What day of judgment? Are you that arrogant that you want to leave it for a day when you won't even know who's right and wrong? We've seen greedy people on earth, very greedy. And sometimes the wealthier they become, the greedier they become. I'm sorry to say this. Not in all cases, but sometimes the people who hold back the rights of others are the wealthiest of the lot. And this is why when we're doing business, many people complain that, you know, the poor come and they will pay. The rich come and they demand a discount. They demand a better deal. They demand something worse. When they come to pay us, say, for example, we've agreed on a certain price, they will pay you. They will shortchange you and say, no, take it or leave it. I mean, that is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. Where the Prophet says, Matulul Ghani Zulmun. When a wealthy person does this, it is, it is wrong. That's one of the meanings of the hadith that's agreed upon. You know, you cannot do that because you're a wealthy person. You think, ah, it's okay, I can take my time. And then you go to a person and say, right, look, you know what? We agreed to give you 5,000 rupees for this thing here, but I'm giving you four, take it or leave it and move. But the deal was done. Everything was over. Everything was already closed and sealed. How can you come now that everything, now that you owe me the money and you have much more than I do, you have millions and I only have a few thousands and you just decided to chop me off. Allah will take that thousand that you agreed but didn't give in another way that you won't like. Like I said, hospital bills, stress, accidents, floods, disasters, through whatever other means it's going to go. Rather give it to that person. Tell them, look, we agreed on five, but never mind. I was so happy with the job. I'm giving you six. They'll make dua for you. They'll pray for you. People will hope that you get even more wealth because you're giving it to people. What on earth are you going to do with that wealth? I've known of people who are so charitable, but they steal. They steal from other people in business, but they're charitable. You know what that means? The wealth that they've given in charity will actually go next to the name of the person whom they've stolen it from. So you did a deal for 5,000, the person came and provided you the, pro the products or whatever product was for 5,000. When you shortchanged them and told them, here's four, take it or leave it, they took it. When you gave a charity for another 10,000, the 1,000 goes next to the name of the person whom you robbed. You robbed. And guess what? Allah will still take more wealth away from you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. Why don't we understand? What do you think? Allah says He doesn't oppress, He doesn't wrong, He doesn't forget, He watches everything, He sees it, He gives you time to mend and to make amends. If you don't, He will intervene. It's called divine intervention. When that divine intervention comes, I promise you there's going to be a massive, massive loss. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So, here goes. If you're if you're listening to this video and you're guilty, I'm not talking about you in particular, but I'm talking about cases such as yours. So take heed. And I promise you, you're listening to this not by mistake. It was meant from Allah for you, even if I don't know you. This particular case is referring to an email I received today, a phone call subsequently that I, I received today and I was dealing with today. And it's shocking. It's very shocking. It's very sad. And I thought to myself, I have to talk about this. How can you not give someone their mahar? 
On how? It's their wealth. Allah will take it away from you anyway. And Allah will give them barakah in one other way, perhaps. Allah will give them something you don't have. And that's the third time I'm saying it tonight. But I promise you I'm passionate about it because someone needs to talk about it. So let's learn to uh, release people or break. Uh, if we are going to break a relationship or a marriage or whatever else, it should happen with honor and dignity, with respect. Bearing in mind that when we came together, we came together with the name of Allah. Many times when divorces happen, people show their true colors. And you cannot believe that you were actually married into this family. That's what people say. I can't believe these are the people. I can't believe when they came across to ask for our hand in marriage, they were like the most holy, the most soft, the most well-natured, the most smiling, the most loving, the most kind. They brought gifts and they came with this and they came with that. And they only showed their true venom when things didn't go their way. That's why people show their true colors when things don't go their way. You want to see someone's true colors? Check what happens when things don't go their way. May Allah protect us. I can't believe that we were actually, actually married. Subhanallah. Living together. And now the enmity is such that we've even forgotten that we owe ob obligations unto Allah uh, and, and you know the, the, our children and so many other people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard every one of us. Uh, yeah, uh, we see the uh, a lot of the, the the comments that are there, and uh, really, I I'm quite sure that nearly everyone will know cases uh, that are connected to what we've said this evening. I will give this a title, and inshallah, post it shortly on YouTube. May Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.